as Scott writes about, uh, there were things going on inside his own organization that he didn't know about, operations being run by the CIA, and in effect, I think it's not an overstatement to say, um, in your book, in your belief anyway, and by the way, I, I can say that as a journalist, I've independently talked to people and verified much of this, all of it. Um, one of the things that was going on is we, kept, we, as we provoked Saddam and, and demanded to get into, as your group did, the UN did, demanded to get to the palaces, their concern was, of course, that the real meaning and the real effort was to assassinate him. And lo and behold, well, that's exactly what happened. I mean, look, the American policy was regime change. At first, they wanted to be passive. We're just going to contain Saddam through economic sanctions, and he's going to collapse on his own volition in six months. That failed. We're going to put pressure on the Iraqis, and we're going to get some Sunni general to apply the 75-cent solution, the cost of a 9-millimeter bullet put in the back of Saddam's head, and a Sunni general will take over. If you want proof positive about the corrupt nature of our regime change policy, understand this. It wasn't about changing the regime. It wasn't about getting rid of the Ba'athist Party or transforming Iraq into a modern democracy back in the early 1990s and, and 19... It was about getting rid of one man, Saddam Hussein, and if he was replaced by a Sunni general who governed Iraq in the exact same fashion, that was okay. And, th and that shows the utter hypocrisy of everything we did. But the CIA was having, very, having a difficult time getting near Saddam because he has this outstanding, and I don't mean that in terms of a bunch of good guys, but a very effective security apparatus. Um, by 1995, Saddam's continued survival had become a political liability to Bill Clinton. And he was coming up for uh, re-election in 96, and he turned to the CIA and said, get rid of Saddam by the summer of 1996. I need that man gone. And the CIA worked with British intelligence. They brought in somebody named Iyad Alawi. Might be a name familiar to people. He was, for a period of time, the interim prime minister of Iraq after the American occupation. Before he was interim prime minister, however, he was a paid agent of British intelligence and the CIA. And he worked with them to orchestrate this coup d'etat that required them to recruit people on the inside of Iraq to be ready to take out Saddam. But you needed a trigger. And the trigger was a UN weapons inspection that I helped organize. We thought we were going after the concealment mechanism. But it turned out that the CIA was setting us up so that we would go to facilities that housed Saddam's security, we would be blocked. It was anticipated they would block us. And then when we withdrew, there would be a military strike. They would decapitate the security of Saddam. The one place that we wanted to go to, uh, the 3rd Battalion, we weren't allowed to. The CIA said, don't worry about that. We know those guys. They're not bad. And they were supposed to rise up and take Saddam out. Well, the Iraqi intelligence service was very effective at infiltrating this coup. They wrapped it up. and. Um, you know, nothing happened in terms of getting rid of Saddam, except one thing. The Iraqis were fully aware of the role played by the CIA in infiltrating UNSCOM and using UNSCOM for own devices. And in the ultimate tragedy of this is that from that point on, every time a UN weapons inspector went into Iraq, somebody with a blue hat, they weren't viewed by the Iraqis as somebody who was trying to disarm Iraq. They were viewed by the Iraqis as somebody try trying to kill their president, and they were right. When did you learn about this? We always knew about regime change. I mean, when I first came in, we knew about regime change. Uh, in terms of the infiltration, you know, some people say it's my fault uh, because I'm the guy that brought in the character I call Mo Dobbs and the special activities uh, staff, uh, the covert operators of the CIA. We used them in 1992. We used them in 1993 uh, because it's tough to do inspections in Iraq. Uh, you know, they're not necessarily the friendliest people in the world when you're trying to go to a site that they don't want you to get in. And you can't have a bunch of uh, thin-necked, um, geeky scientists uh, trying to do this job. You need, you need guys... Are you talking uh, about New Yorkers? No. <laughs> <laughs> but you need guys with thick necks and thick arms. And uh, the CIA had plenty of these guys who could do logistics. They could do planning. They could do communications in austere environments. So we used these guys. Um, and we used them in, in June. The, the, the problem came afterwards when we do, started doing follow-up inspections. First of all, the Iraqis would come to me. And they would say, Mr. Ritter, what are you doing? You know, you're supposed to be an inspector, and yet you're doing all this bad stuff. We know about the CIA's coup attempt, and I'm going, what coup attempt? We know what happened in June. But what happened in June? And suddenly we start inspecting sites, and I see documents that start sending off signals in my head about, oh my gosh, the unit the CIA didn't want us to go to was the unit that was liquidated by Saddam Hussein in the aftermath of the failed coup, because that was the unit that was trying to take out Saddam. And, and suddenly the... the you know, the light goes off and you're sitting there going, 
you know, we've, we've had the, the wool pulled over our eyes. We've been used. Uh, we were used by the United States, though. And they're the most powerful nation on the Security Council that we as inspectors work for. So how do you turn to your boss and say, hey, you've used us. We, we won't tolerate that. Well, you can't do that. What you have to do is continue to plod forward and just redouble your efforts to maintain the integrity of a process that tragically had been terminally corrupted by that point. So, let's see. We've got the Clinton administration looking really good here. <laughs>